So we want to find the amplitude period phase shift and um, then we want to graph this function right here. So y equals 2 cosine of 4x plus 3 pi, uh, close parentheses, plus 1. So we see it's of the form y equals a cosine omega x minus phi plus b. So what, what I want to do is I want to factor out this 4 here real quick. So if I factor the 4 out, I have x plus 3 pi over 4. So that tells me right off the bat that my phi here is negative 3 pi over 4. Now you're like, what, Mr. Clark? How do you get a negative there, right? That's what I'm saying. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that. All right, so when I look at this, Looks like A is 2, omega is 4, phi is, um, well, that says minus, but this says plus. Well, how do I make that plus a minus? I do minus a minus 3 pi here, okay? And then that's where that negative is coming into play. Okay, so... Your amplitude, absolute value of A is equal to the absolute value of 2, which is 2. Your period, T, which is equal to 2 pi over omega. So that's 2 pi over, and how do I know it's 2 pi? Because cosine typically has a 2 pi um, period if it was like tangent or a cotangent, it would be a pi period, okay? Um, so what's going on here? It's um, divide by four, right? So divide by four gets me pi over two. And my phase shift, my phase shift, well, what is my phase shift? This is how far I'm shifting over. Looks like my phase shift here um, is omega over, I'm sorry, phi over omega. Okay, so this is negative 3 pi over 4. Okay, negative 3 pi over 4. All right, so that's what's going on here. This piece right here, you could rewrite it as 4 x minus a minus 3 pi over 4, okay, is the cosine of this plus 1 and then a 2 factor in front for my amplitude. All right, so let's see if we can get the five critical points. Well, I need the starting and the ending point. So my starting is negative 3 pi over 4. The ending, remember, so it's like phi over omega and then phi over omega plus 2 pi over omega, right? So um, that ending value, well, that's going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4, right, which is pi over 2. So if I add those two together, I think I just get pi over 4 negative. Okay, so this is negative pi over 4. All right, so yikes. So what's happening here? To get on this number line, negative 3 pi over 4 to negative pi over 4. So half, half, half. All right, so how far am I adding? So let's think about it. The length of this interval here looks like it's just pi over um, pi over four, okay? No, that's not right. The length, I think it's pi over pi over two. 
is the length of that interval. And so that whole length is pi over 2. So I take that and divide by 4. That gets me pi over 8 for each piece. So if I add pi over 8, so minus 3 pi over 4 plus pi over 8. Okay, how did I get this? I uh, literally take the length of the interval and divide by 4. Okay, and so that's going to get me what? That gets me negative 6 pi over 8 plus pi over 8 is negative 5 pi over 8. Then the next one, so it's negative 5 pi over 8 plus pi over 8 is negative 4 pi over 8. Well, negative 4 pi over 8 is negative pi over 2. And then negative pi over 2 plus pi over 8, that's going to be negative 3 pi over 8 here. So these are my critical values, right? And I'm going to use those to plug in to get my key, five key points, okay? So if I know anything about cosine, I already know the behavior of cosine. I start at 0, 1, and it goes down, 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 up, and then peaks out again. So my five key points are like this. So if you want to you wanna work through all that magic, you can. Or you can shorten the work up for yourself. Okay, and two pi and then one here, all right? So we can use our tricks from transformations. Um, the number, the coefficient in front is a two. So what's that gonna do? Well, that's not gonna change these values here. They're gonna be what they are. But this value is, instead, if it's a two, that makes this zero comma two, right? And then pi comma negative two, and then this is two pi comma positive two here, right? So that's two cosine x going on there, okay? But um, we have a phase shift, okay? So where's my first critical point? It's at negative 3 pi over 4, comma, and what was the y value that goes with this x value? It's 2. Okay, that's my first point. The next one is what? It's uh, negative 5 pi over 8, and what's the y value that goes with that? That's 0. The next x value that's critical point is negative pi over 2, and what's the x value that goes with that? It's negative 2. And then we have negative 3 pi over 8. And the critical value that goes here is 0. And the last one, negative pi over 4. And the critical value that goes there is 2. Okay? So I have those values. Uh-oh, let me redo that. Okay, so we're negative. So looks like minus pi over 4. Minus 3 pi over 8. Minus pi over 2. Minus 5 pi over 8, and then minus 3 pi over 4. Okay, so let's start. Where do we start? We start here. So I'm going to go, so I'm going to have, okay, so that's 0, so I'm going to do 2 here, and I'm going to do minus 2 down here. So my first dot is right here, all right? And 
I'm sorry. For this one, it's right here at negative 3 pi over 4 comma t. And I'm going down here at negative 5 pi over 8 comma 0. And then down to here at negative pi over 2 comma negative 2. And then up here at negative 3 pi over 8 comma 0. And then last, I have negative pi over 4 comma 2. So my curve, bend this down and up like this. Okay. Duplicate. Just like that, all right. Okay, so now this graph right here, this is um, two cosine of, let's see, two cosine of four X plus three pi. But what do we want? So that's y equals 2 cosine x plus, or 2 cosine of 4x plus 3 pi. We want to actually shift this thing up 1. Okay, so if I shift everything up 1, my goodness, right? So I'm going to shift everything up 1. So now instead of being a mark at 2, I'm going to have a mark at 3. Instead of having a mark at negative 2, I'm going to have a mark at negative 1. Okay. So this point is up here. Then we come down. Then we go down here. Then we come back up. Then we finish off where we started. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to connect the dots better than I can. First grade was hard for me. All right. So now this new point here is negative 3 pi over 4 comma 3. What happened? I literally shifted up from 2 to 3. Okay. Then I have minus 5 pi over 8 comma um. Oh, I'm sorry, this is that's not right. That's not my critical point anymore. Uh, my critical point actually shifted up a little bit. Goodness gracious! All right, let's see here. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Okay, so this is my new critical point. It's negative five pi over eight comma one. Down here, I've got negative pi over two comma negative two. Here I have negative 3 pi over 8 comma 1. And last I've got negative pi over 4 comma 3. Okay? So I take that curve and I can... Oops. I can duplicate again. And you see how the game goes. Okay? So this is y equals 2 cosine 4x plus 3 pi plus 1. Okay, we shifted it up 1. Okay? Whew. All right. If you were going to use transformations here to help you out, you could do that. All right, you could do that. How would you do it? So what I would do is I would take y equals 2 cosine 4x plus 3 pi plus 1, and I would factor the 4 out, and so that gives me 2 cosine 4, and then inside I'd have x plus 3 pi over 4, okay, plus 1 on the outside, so this tells me to go left 3 pi over 4, 
This tells me to go up one. Okay. So I go left three pi over four. And I go up one. And I multiply by two. So my transformation, what's happening first, okay? So I take my cosine x, and then I double it, cosine x, okay? So vertical stretch, okay? And then what? Then what? I replace replace x with 4x, so I have 2 cosine of 4x, so this is horizontal compress, remember we're going 4 times faster, okay, and then what's going to happen, dun dun dun, right, okay, so what's, what's going to happen from there? After I do my horizontal compress, I want to do a phase shift, okay? So 2 cosine 4x plus 3 pi. Well, my phase shift is to the left, 3 pi over 4. And then my last step... Last step is going to be taking this and we're going to shift it up one unit, up one here. Okay? So literally, what's what's happening to this graph? Okay? Draw my cosine. My cosine looks like this. Okay? So this is 1 to negative 1, right? And vertical stretch, what does a vertical stretch do? The vertical stretch is literally going to double everything. So I go up to 2. So let me move this down some so I can get everything in here. Okay. up here Two. zero here all right so the the vertical stretch here makes it do this all right um Horizontal compress, it's four times faster. So if I have a two pi period and I'm going to cut it, well, four times as fast, then that's going to be a pi over two period. So a pi over two period gets me where I get everything done in this amount of time, which is like uber insane. Okay, so literally now my graph. like this, okay? So let me see here if I can change that color. Let me do something to stand out, all right. Okay, so that really did shorten everything up pretty fast, right? Now, this tells me to shift to the left, 3 pi over 4. So I'm going to shift it to the left, 3 pi over 4. OK. 
okay. So this is negative three pi over four here. All right, just like we had this over here, it was at two. And then the last step, the last step is to take the graph and move it up one. And so I take the graph and I move it up one. So this gets me negative three pi over four comma three. Oops. Oh my goodness, it's hard to draw on this scale, right? So those are all my critical points. Those are my five critical points. Everything between negative three pi over four comma three to uh, pi over four comma three. Negative pi over four comma three here, okay? So that's how you would use transformations to start with this curve right here, which is just the cosine of x. Convert it to this curve here, two cosine of x. Convert it here to two cosine of four x. And then this converts it to two cosine four x plus three pi, and then this last one here is two cosine four x plus three pi plus one on the outside, okay? So, and that's just one period of it, and then you would, you would connect all your different period, you know, all the periods you wanna draw to get all of it, okay? So, um, just be careful when you're going through this, like if you're going to do if same thing, um, with other sections, when you graph things like, uh, um, cosecant X, what did you do? You graph the sign first, right? So you figure out, figure out what that booger would look like if it was a sign graph. Okay. However, however it looks, and then everywhere you have x-intercepts, right, you have your vertical asymptotes, and then you figure out where, where the um, peaks and troughs are to graph your um, cosecant or secant um, functions, depending on what they might give you, okay? So the game's the same. Figure out what that weird sine function looks like. You know, if it's a cosine one like this, right? Um, then you would just, for your secant, you just do those um, little reverse looking parabola type things, but they're not exactly parabola curves, right? Okay, guys. Well, good luck in your homework, and if you have any questions, uh, you know where to go.